Hello everyone, welcome to episode 12 of the Adult Game Maker course and in this episode we will dive into the fundamentals of the layout section and how it can enhance your game's user experience. So let's get started and unlock the secrets of crafting engaging gameplay. So in Adult Game Maker, the layout is like the blueprint of your game. It defines which things go where, and it all starts by creating a box using a thing key. Then for instance, one box could contain buttons, while another could house your precious resources. And of course, hopefully this goes without saying, but layout boxes are declared in the layout section as with everything in Idle Game Maker. But here's where it gets interesting. Boxes can contain other boxes as well. So you can think of this like, for example, nesting Russian dolls. Not to mention that boxes can even contain things with specific tags. And this feature adds a whole new layer of organization to your game elements. Now when it comes to presentation, you are definitely not limited. Layout boxes can be repositioned and styled using CSS, which can make your game look and feel just the way you want it. There is also a CSS tutorial linked in the description if you are interested in further styling your game, or if you want to, you can check out my tutorial lesson on CSS repositioning, which is linked in the description as well, in which we dive deeper into using CSS and the layout section together. So now with the layout section overview, let's take a look at some of the unique properties of the layout section. So obviously we have the box key, which is basically the thing key that you create your box with right in the layout section and box keys follow the same naming restrictions as thing keys only letters and numbers allowed so basically they are pretty much the same as a thing key with the only difference being that you cannot use them in expressions the contains property is actually very very interesting and this is where you can set what things go inside of this box and if you want you can pause the video here and take a look at all of the values that this property can have for example you can have buttons inside of your box and then your box will contain every single button in the game you can also have it contain some tag or you can have it contain multiple things for example you can have have a box contain resources, things tagged, food upgrade, buttons, some other boxes and the log as well. The in property is rather self-explanatory, this just means that you can nest this box inside another box using this property and the header property simply adds a header into your box. Next up we have the footer and this defines text that shows up at the bottom of this box and it also accepts text effects. Now I will dive into text effects in a different episode but for now just know that it does accept them. The class property simply gives the specified CSS classes to the box. Tooltip origin defines the origin of the tooltip of the elements inside of this box. So for example if you have the tooltip origin to be top and you hover over an element which is contained in that box, the tool tip would show up on the top of the element. You can also add CSS classes to tooltips using tooltip class property or you can also just simply add the no tooltip property into some kind of box and that means that the thing inside that box will not trigger a tooltip. Next up you have the names show and names hide property and this is rather self-explanatory. This basically defines whether all things inside this box should show or hide their names. And icons show and icons hide work in the same way. Next up we have cost show and cost hide. These work in the same way as well and then we have PS show and PS hide and this defines whether all things inside this box should show or hide their production per second. Now a little note that I added right here is that PS hide or PS show only works if the box contains resources, otherwise it would not make sense to add PS hide to a box because resources are the only thing that show their production per second. Last but not least we have the use default property and this is actually where things get a little bit interesting because this use default property is basically this entire code right here condensed into just two words. But even when you are just using the default layout, you can still customize your layout further. For instance, if you wanted an extra box to display achievements, you would do it like so. So in the layouts, you would just... So you would first declare the layout section, then you would type in the use default property, and then you would add a new box with the box key achieves, you would have it be contained in main, that is this box right here, which already contains the resources and the buttons, and then you would have this box contain achievements. With unique properties covered, let's learn about the usefulness of the layout in further detail. I have created a diagram of the default Idle Game Maker layout, which every game has when starting a new source file, and it describes how the default layout is actually displayed in the game. So inside of this snippet of code is actually the code for this default layout right here. And if you've been following my Idle Game Maker tutorial course, you'd know that this is actually the game that we are developing. So when we come back to this snippet of code right here, we can see that it contains six main boxes. And those are 
the main box, the rest box, the buttons box, and the store box, the buildings box, and the upgrades box. The main box contains the rest and buttons box, the rest box contains the resources and has a class attached called full width. And the buttons box, well, it just contains buttons. Then we have the store box, which is a little bit more interesting because it actually contains the buildings box and the upgrades box. You can see that the buildings box contains buildings and has a tooltip origin of left and also has a header of buildings, which we can see right here. Then we have the upgrades box, which contains the upgrades, has a header with the text upgrades, which you can see right over here. It also has costs hide and names hide as well. And here we can see the dimensions of these boxes. So we have the buildings box, which is sized pretty much half of the store box and the upgrades box forms the second half of the store box. And of course, together they form the store box in full. Of course, also important to mention is that the position of these boxes is set by the style sheet. However, you can further customize them yourself in the CSS section. And with that said, that should be the end of this episode. Hopefully it made you understand the layout section and its usefulness a little bit better. And if you are following my Idle Game Maker course, there won't be a challenge in this episode because I feel that the default layout is good enough for what you are trying to achieve. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss my latest tutorials. And for those of you who want to take your support to the next level, check out my Patreon, which is $2 a month, you can have your name etched forever into the outro of my videos. A small way of saying thank you for helping me create awesome content for you. Of course, link to the Patreon is in the description. So, with that said, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.